Hello and welcome to the Art Department Podcast. My name is Jan Oschel and with me Emmanuel Shu, and we are at episode 26. Now, today's topic is going to be about how to read your client's mind. So this is not about telepathy or uh, mind reading uh, in the true sense, if there is a true sense, I don't know. But it's about learning to read your client, read uh, what he says, what he does, what he shows you, what is in the emails and try to get really behind what the client's intention is so that we as artists can deliver better work. And sometimes it's the work that not necessarily the client asks for, but that he needs. So we've, uh, this is inspired by some recent uh, uh, interactions we had with um, potential clients and, and, and real clients and uh, also um, people that have reached out to us. So uh, this was actually partly inspired by um, one of the listeners. And I wanted to just to give him a quick shout out because he suggested uh, talking about this. Um, it's Diogo Sampaio, and I hope I didn't butcher his name. Um, and we'll get into the episode. So um, as usual, it's one of uh, more traditional format of the episodes we uh, did so far. So we have a lot of points to talk about. And um, I don't know, do you have something? No more slideshow, by the way. No, no more slideshow. Yeah, oh my gosh, you, for all the YouTube listeners, uh, now you can see our beautiful faces even <laughs> bigger. Um, Please let us know if that is too much and maybe we can have some, <laughs> I don't know, is there like some real time AR uh, that we can add to our feeds? I have no idea. Anyway, um, do you have anything you want to, uh, anything that to, to jumpstart the conversation here? Well, I think, you know, this is a good chance for us to, you know, talk about our experiences because I'm sure we've been through, you know, many a time oh, yeah, yeah. where, you know, we, we've, we, you know, you start the show and then now you're kind of going, all right, uh, you know, uh, how do I take this feedback? Mm. And, you know, what, what, you know, what, what is it? Right. Uh, and, and a lot of times it starts off with a first ever meeting, which is always nerve wracking oh, yeah. already as it is. Uh, but I, I think that um, a lot of times, I think that's a probably a good place to start, you know, like what do you do on your first time giving feedback and, and right. i mean getting feedback and then when you get the feedback what do you do with it yeah that's true and um, you know what happens after that and i i think you know i just want to touch real quickly on just sort of some etiquette stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know where i think a lot of people um, me included i have learned i've learned this through the years where it's like you have to ask the proper questions mm -hmm. and how do you actually talk to to the client because right. when they give you your assignment i mean it starts from there right you haven't done anything yet right you've just talked to he's the director art director yeah. production designer whatever right you've just sat you know you're talking to them and they're now giving you their brief mm. what do you do because a lot of people will you know talk too much and cut people off and you know uh, you know that that's like in terms of mm -hmm. etiquette i've seen that happen where the director is not even halfway through and the guy's like, ah, yeah, yeah, well, I, I know about that, you know, <laughs> and then they start talking and stuff like that. So I, I know some of this stuff might be really basic, mm. but it's also very sort of, uh, I think it's just falls in the sense of good manners and etiquette and, and, you know, so first is always to listen, right? right? Listen first. Yeah. And really, I mean, try to step back and, um, yeah, let I them, mean, let them explain what, what, what they want to bring across. Right. Yeah, because I, I think, you know, uh, a lot of people say, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I do that. No, not listening like you listen and then you're spacing out thinking about something else. Like really listen and 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 think about any questions that you may have for later. Mm. But really listen to see, you know, what it is that, you know, they're wanting um, so that you can have a conversation with this person. And a lot of times if it's a director you're talking to, they don't have much time. And mm. they don't have much patience. So they'll, they're going to tell you and you probably get a chance to ask two or three questions before they kind of go, OK, I got to go. Yeah, um, that's happened to me all the time. So you have to be very um, concise uh, and, and be efficient in your asking your question. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, oh, I'm going to tell you a big story about that. Like, don't I mean, for me, I find that that doesn't work so well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unless you're really, really good at telling 
you know stories that 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 people really want to hear mm. um the other thing is don't be completely silent either like after you know after yeah, the director yeah. talks <laughs> i mean it's this awkward silence have something constructive to ask or say yeah and i mean and it's important. it's it's a tricky thing though i think for a lot of people i mean you just maybe got like in it in, in in like expansive uh mind dump from the director about every little thing that he wants to make do with this project that can also be right there's some people i mean the same way that that we as artists are all different the directors are all different and their way of of talking their style of presenting um is is always different there are some directors who are very good at like getting you on board and really getting you excited for the project there's other ones that are a bit more um, um, held back and they don't want to necessarily like uh, jump at like jump with everything at you and I mean it's not only that you're talking to the director right it could also be a production designer an art director whoever is going to be your your superior for the duration of the project and I mean not everybody is the same so some of the art directors might be very very calm people and you have to kind of extract the information from them so part of that listening that you mentioned I think is also trying to get a feel for what kind of person that director is if if that hasn't already happened in maybe the the kickoff call or the first the like the first interaction because I mean the feedbacks the first feedback session is hardly the first time you're going to be talking to them right so I think uh, I don't know. I mean, I, it can be yeah. uh, it can be very limited because I, I mean, I've had a lot of pitch uh, meetings where the director talked to me once and mm -hmm. then the rest of the time was pretty much just like emails oh, okay. and it's really not personal. Um, but I, I, I agree with you. I think I think it's on you to figure out what they want mm. now how you know like a, a lot of things what I do. I mean, I, I don't I, I'm not going to say that my way is the only way no, because no, no. it isn't. But my my way is that since a lot of this is done over Zoom anyway, mm. uh, I mean for the last ten years pretty much it's been over yeah. over some kind of video chat. So what I usually do is I, I off screen I have my notebook. Definitely, ready. yeah, definitely. And then I put in just a word, you know, like if he's talking about you know certain my you know something, and I'll just write down a quick abbreviation of that thing. Not enough to where I'm just writing, and then the director sees you writing. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not good. Uh, but, you know, you jot down something quick just to remind you that when he stops, that you can look at it and go, okay, well, what about that? Yeah, exactly. You know? um, that's what I do. I don't know. Is there anything Yo, you definitely, do? definitely. I mean, uh, my, I've always, like, everything's full of notebooks, um, mm -hmm. full of scribbles, notes. And I try to, um, I try to really, I, I, I know I can't trust my brain. I know I can't <laughs> trust to recall everything that they mentioned. So I'll, I... I don't take detailed notes, but I take uh, take bullet points. I try to um, make sure I understand the dependencies of not only the project management, but also like again, what, what like what's happening within the project, within the storyline, within whatever design task I need to tackle. Um, I also mm -hmm. sometimes, I mean, once we get into the the feedback sessions and everything, I start doodling um, really quick, ugly things, but. I, I felt I feel like um, whatever comes into my head the moment like I bounce off ideas with with whoever is is the director is is incredibly valuable information to to myself if oftentimes mm -hmm. when I let it when I let it sink in for too long I kind of lose a certain amount of spontaneity so I'd like to to just like take quick quick sketches not, not like to a degree where I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry, can you please stop talking? I need to like, like draw something right now. Uh, not to that degree. It's really like a fraction of a second. I just doodle some some ideas down, and I can I can fall back on those um, once mm -hmm. I actually well, go, go to the I design. I think that's task. great. Yeah. That's that's great. I mean, I, but I, I would just caution. Just make sure um, you're paying attention. Oh, of course, um, of course. It, because it cannot I, I, I think a lot. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, because it's it's easy to just kind of, even if you write a longer sentence. I yeah, mean, yeah, I, yeah. I've taught enough that, you know, when when I say something and the student or, or whoever is just writing stuff down, I, I tell them usually, stop writing it down. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I have to say because you're missing what I'm mm -hmm. saying by writing things yeah. down. So 
it just has to be a, a word or mm -hmm. something quick shorthand mm -hmm. and if you can doodle while you're doing it and and it doesn't offend or people don't yeah. see you looking down then that's okay yeah. um the other thing is you know you can record like a lot of times i record mm. i i'll go my phone and i'll press record oh, okay. just to you know i have a i can hear what they say or what whatever you need to do mm. um uh, you know if you you know if you need to do that you can do that um, just, let just for know. your own benefit yeah, just right? let them know beforehand yes i mean that is <laughs> uh no i mean honestly that is the the legal way um uh, of doing it mm. and not only just to say that it's also the ethical way just to let them know that you're you know you're recording um the the thing and and you know uh but whatever you do just you know you know best what you're going to do with the recording if nobody you know if you just listen to it great and then you destroy it uh you know i think you know it's fine but i mean just let people know i mean it can't hurt i mean just say hey look i just want to make sure that you know so we're on the same page and if, yeah. if they don't like it then they'll tell you no of no course of course you don't have to respect yeah. that right um right. so let me like a question that would come to my mind is that um so let's say you okay there, there's always a language barrier right so we have i mean it's not always a given that that i mean um that the directors will speak english and you will speak perfect english and there's always there's a no 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 questions uh, at all about that part but i mean the fact is that uh, now with everything everything being so global that people will come from all all walks of life all different nationalities and english is not always the first language right um so what if you're like in a meeting and they give you feedback and for reasons either language barrier or you really have no idea what they just talked about and you just really don't understand what your next steps are and what they really wanted out of it like what do you what do you do do you tell them like sorry can you like repeat everything you just said for the last half an hour well i think this is this is where i think the recording comes in handy mm -hmm. uh because the, you can listen to it again and again to sort of decipher mm -hmm. it uh and this could be a good reason f for you to tell them that's why you want to record yeah it. yeah that's a good uh, point uh y you know so definitely i think you know and even then you know you may not understand mm. um and if you're let's say i was working on a german film yeah. and and it was you know like the director only speaks german mm. i i honestly don't think that i could work on the project mm. because i can't really like unless i f there's a way for me to understand what you want Mm -hmm. um because the communication that's yeah. where all the information comes from i mean i could spend three days five days painting something or designing something that is absolutely not even what you want yeah uh, but i mean there's there could be uh, there could be a lot of insecurities as well let's, let's say you're not like a seasoned professional let's say you're quite junior you're quite um you're not quite sure how things work and you're not that confident you have like uh, you're afraid of you're afraid basically of looking like um, you don't know what you're doing. And maybe maybe the feedback session over Zoom is the first time you actually talk to them. Maybe everything up to that point was with uh, email. So you could always take your mm -hmm. time to rephrase your sentences, to write everything out. But now mm -hmm. you realize, oh, bloody hell, what, what do I do? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm always like saying yes and, uh, um, and, and, and not in my head. In, not in, in order not to look like I'm I'm a fool or I'm I don't mm. know what I'm doing mm. like I see I see I see, I see. What, what would you recommend in such okay a, so what I, such a case? I would recommend um, is that to be honest mm. so I would recommend you saying hey um, you know I my understanding and comprehension and and s some of the English mm. uh, language is you know I have a weakness there mm. Um, so please bear with me if, you know, if I fumble certain things or if I'm a little bit more quiet, mm. I'm listening. Um, I just want you to know, you know, I, I, and I will say stuff like that. Like if there's something, um, that I need to say that's, you know, regarding some insecurities I have, I will say it. Yeah. But for me, it's not English obviously, but maybe yeah, for yeah. me is saying, all right, um, I don't really do that, um, thing, uh, like characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I will, tr you know, like, uh, of course, that's different. But uh, what I'm saying is just be honest about your shortcomings and people will understand. 
Mm. Um, because you don't want people thinking you're just completely silent and you have right, nothing to right, contribute right, right. either. They, right? they might mistake that for something else. Yeah. Right. So you may he may talk and you say, "I'm going to you know I'm I have a little uh, English is my second language and mm -hmm. I I'm uh, I'm going to try to say this right and uh, hopefully you can understand me." And once you say that, people will understand. They will try to really help you out, mm. you know. But if they don't know, they don't they don't know how to help you because you're mm. silent. Right, so right, that's right. that's what I would do if I was. Yeah, in that that's. Situation. I mean, that's it, it, it's it's very difficult, though, right? Um, it's difficult. It's difficult very, very to difficult. admit that, and and I mean, there's always a fear of like, oh my god, if if I tell them that I don't know this, they're gonna fire me, kind of thing, right? But no, no, in most will, cases, they will not do this that. This won't happen, yeah. right? This won't happen. And and you know, you can also if you feel more comfortable before the meeting to email them any fears you have yeah, you say yeah, hey yeah, yeah. you know i'm sorry i maybe you have a, a speaking uh, difficulty mm -hmm, uh, yeah. maybe you have uh, you know y y there's a lot of you know you don't just ha have to be sort of you know english as a second language but if you have a stutter uh, yeah, or yeah, what yeah. if you have you know there's a lot of people who have other problems yeah, and and y let them know uh, but write them on an email mm. or or say hey you know um, I have these issues and it's better handled like this. Mm. Do you mind? And and I tell you, people will work with you. They will not fire you. Mm -hmm. They will not tell you, you know, but only tell them what needs to be known, right? Yeah, yeah. And if yeah. you don't share you know, everything, you have the, the flu, home. you don't have to tell them. <laughs> you don't have to tell them what you, you know, any affliction, you ha that is your confidentiality. You don't have to tell them anything. Exactly. But if something has to do with, you know, talking and, and there's a problem there, yeah. then you can be upfront. Yeah, I mean, I once it affects the working relationship or the work you do, that then then it's better to let them know. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, so you know, so that's sort of the first meeting. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're talking mm -hmm. and and you know, like, uh, you know, w w what are you? How are you going to ask things? You know, the, the the director, art director, whoever is is now giving you your brief. You know, mm. they usually probably going to show you some sort of reference mm. um, and say, hey, really like these things. And then now it's your job to ask the appropriate questions. Right. I mean, you have to basically and hopefully before this meeting, you would have done some research on mm. whatever, you know, if it's a director, then research on that director. Yeah, exactly, if it's yeah. if it's an art director, then maybe on the art director oh, yeah, and the game. Uh, you know, whatever, because you can't go in there with no research and and you're you know, you're not going to be able to um, ask appropriate questions. Like for me, like if I went into a meeting with, let's say, any like, say, Guillermo del Toro, mm. and he says to me, hey, you know, I want to do this. Uh, and I'd be like, oh, are you talking about like like Pan's Labyrinth or like Pacific Rim? Like what, what, which color palette were you mm -hmm. going for? And what, why, you know, like, do you want like a creature like that or like that? And he might say, no, no, no. Actually, I want it completely different. Mm. But now you already have a yeah, really yeah, yeah. good idea. Oh, okay, really different from that. So definitely not the warm, cool palette. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll try a more monochrome palette. You yeah. know, like you'll... You know, but do your research because without the research, you, you really don't know. Yeah. Right? I mean, what, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, in your first meeting. I mean, yeah. first of all, when I get the names, I Google the names. IMDb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, uh, <laughs> check what they have done before. Um, and I mean, the chances are that, I mean, honestly, the industry is small. There's not that many projects. And in, in most cases, somebody who will reach out to you has worked on something you know. Um, and I, I mean, I feel like it's never wrong to to flatter a person. Like it's like saying like, like, oh, I, I mean, I love what you did with on that movie. Like I've, I thought that was really great and, and different. And um, you don't you don't need to lie. I mean, if anything, but you can just be honest and, and everybody likes a compliment. Right. So I would usually do my research in, in what these people have done and which also kind of gives you a clue as to what they like. And then. Um, even going even further than that, I mean, a lot of pro production designers have different backgrounds, right? It's not like a production designer starts production designing at age 20 out of school and then that's what they do. They come from all walks of life. So, um, for example, if you have if you have like a concept artist turned production designer, he probably will like different things and knows different things than maybe like an architect um, or um, um, uh, uh, some kind of a different um, 
background music video director or whatever I, there are so many different uh, backgrounds that these people have and that kind of um you can kind of know that oh if he's an architect then maybe he likes a different execution of things or he he he's more well versed in in architectural vernacular than somebody who's a concept designer um and that helps me a lot to understand the kind of person i'm i'm working with and um I think what you mentioned about um, is like, I think all of us in the entertainment industry have like a common, um, there's a common, like movies and, and certain games and, and certain, I don't know, comic books, they're all like, they're all like universally understood and that's what we reference back to. So that like when we talk about oh, you do an adventure movie, then everybody's going back to like, I don't know, Indiana Jones or Tomb Raider or whatever. If you talk about sci-fi, it's like, oh, do you want it like Star Trek or Star Wars, right? So that um, that we always have like a, a, a certain, that's that's our Bible, so to speak. And that's because what we can refer back to. I think humans are very good at, at um, comparing things. Like if you say like, oh, I want a creature that's like really ugly and scary, then if it's like if you have to imagine something out of nothing it's it's very difficult but if you can say like oh is it like the creature an alien or is it like the creature in i don't know something else right then suddenly we have reference points and then um we can more easily figure out commonalities and 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 talk about the kind of direction we want to go in so i think that's that's yeah. very very helpful no that's great because i think the reference point is key here mm -hmm. um because you know, it's you, you, that's why you do your research so you can bring up yeah. all these little reference points. Even if you don't know, then educate yourself. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm going to speak a lot about movies because, I mean, lately it's, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. But I, I think this applies to anything in the art field pretty much. Mm. You know, any client, any art director, it's, it's the same. And, and most people, you're going to be able to find something on them. They may yeah. have an Instagram. Mm. They'll have something or the, the, the previous game or illustration or, or book cover they did or whatever. Mm -hmm. you, you can say, oh, I, you know, I think the flattery is good. Just, you know, add a I, I'm pretty uh, I'm not I don't do that a whole lot except no, no, no. for <laughs> you have to though i mean at some no, point but you it, do have to say it should be an honest compliment rather than like oh, yeah, oh yeah, i love absolutely. everything you do right so yeah yeah no 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 Every, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I always try to find at least one positive mm. thing to say about something that that the person has done before that right. i really believe yeah exactly um, exactly but that's all you need you know mm. like you don't have to like don't go overboard but okay so so now now you know uh you, you get to the point where they're saying you know, so in the script, you know, it says here, show me something you, we've never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't know. I've gotten that so many times. Nonstop. Um, I don't know. Have you got, you've gotten, you must have gotten it, that. Always. It's always, it's always that like, um, and, the, but the, 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 a close second to saying like, oh, I want, like, we want to see something that we've never seen before. is like, oh, like the, like if, if you have an art director, talking to is like oh the director wants something or the client like talking to talking about producers like they want to see something never seen before but you know like um we all know that that's not gonna happen so let's uh, take it down a notch and then um that that's the second most common thing i hear these days but i mean so you have to decipher that i mean um it, it's it's a key word right Un uniqueness or never seen before it's like a placeholder for something else so you need to figure out what that means right yeah i mean i think i think something you've never seen before i that's my top one and what i usually do with that is because i know that's completely i mean honestly it means nothing to me mm -mm -mm. because i don't have any bearing what that is yeah. so i'll start saying oh okay uh so not something you've never seen before let's say you know like a spaceship like you've never seen before mm -hmm. let's say let's say like that right something totally unique then i'm like oh um so did you like the millennium falcon i mean i'll just throw something out mm -mm -mm. doesn't matter what it is right and th and then you just take a look at the reaction yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point if they react like what the hell well you know you're not going to go in that direction <laughs> because that he's just telling you he doesn't like that mm. so you have to narrow it down mm -mm -mm. 
What do you think, Jan? Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's a tricky thing, right? I mean, most of all, most of all, you have to keep in mind that what uh, unique that statement is is very relative, and it depends on each person, right? So something unique to let's say your parents might absolutely not be unique to you. Like they, they, your parents will say like, wow, that's the most unique spaceship I've ever seen. But you go like, wow, I have, I have seen and drawn this like a hundred times, right? So you have to, you have to kind of try to understand what is uniqueness for, for the client. And also mm. uniqueness has many different forms. So like it could be that they want a unique idea a unique functionality it could also be that they want a run-of-the-mill spaceship design but they want to have a unique framing a unique take on the colors or like uh, anything it could be it could be that for them uniqueness is like millennium falcon and pink right so it's really for you to drill down what uh, <laughs> it could be right i mean it's like i've never seen that before and it would be very true statement but um it really it's for you to figure out what that what that really means and and i mean more often than not i mean the uniqueness will be thrown out at some point um right and this is exactly where you know the research comes in yeah, yeah you need yeah. to know you know you need to be able to give them the references i mean if you're going on a sci-fi show you need to know your sci-fi vocabulary mm, because then exactly. you can say okay um you have to start narrowing that person down it's like this game we used to play when we were young called mastermind mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. Have you played that? Like no, mastermind, I don't think so. you have to like, like one side chooses like all these pegs mm -hmm. that are this color. And then you, you know, you have like 10 tries to guess what pegs they have. So oh. you put, you know, so it's just a, a system of narrowing them mm -hmm. down so that you kind of go, okay, they don't want this. Mm. They kind of like this. Mm. So I'm going to take that. And I, you know, I don't know if this is a thing, but I mean, a lot, you know, like I'll, I'll take what you like 90% mm. and I'll push it 10%. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I, the 10% is my creativity and I'll push it, mm. but I need a base. Mm. I need, I have to have a base because otherwise if I just give you something completely unique, like a spaceship, like a, looks like a flying loaf of bread, <laughs> you're not going to like it. Exactly. It's unique, but you, it, you're going to be like, well, that's kind of stupid. So that's what I do uh, because that that's the only way I can find that I can at least have some success mm. because if you don't narrow it down, you're basically, sh you're closing your eyes and you're throwing the dart mm. somewhere and it's never going to hit the dart board because you, you don't know where you, at least you're not even in a general direction. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so yeah, that's, that's, true. That's, true. that's, that's me. But I mean, you know, every, it, it goes to everything. Like, you know, when people say, Oh yeah, let's make it more retro, retro to what age? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, retro could be anything in the past. Right, exactly, right. And then it, de it, it also depends, right? Like what, what is retro maybe a couple of years ago with all the 80s stuff. Uh, maybe in 10 years, we're going to refer to anything in the 90s as retro, right? So it's, it, it, it's very much a, a, a sign of the times. Um, and, and it depends on that person because yeah, exactly. what's retro to somebody is not retro to somebody else. Exactly. So ask really good questions and you know if if you're lucky enough for them to show you their references here's the trick ask them what about that reference mm -hmm. they like mm -hmm. like you can be more inquisitive like oh here's this spaceship you're showing me but maybe all they're saying is they like the antenna you have to <laughs> yeah, ask true, yeah, yeah. otherwise you're going off of the wrong things mm -hmm. i mean just because you see the reference doesn't mean you know exactly what they want so i always go oh well, what about this do you like? Mm. And th they usually go, oh, my God, I love the shape. And they'll give you some history and they mm. get excited because it's their reference. Exactly. But if they say, well, I just like the I just like the pattern of the uh, the graphics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank goodness I asked that because then, you know, I was going to go off of the ship shape. Yeah. Or like, oh, I like uh, the brushwork. And then you're like, oh, I thought you liked the. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to me, you know, really really trying to uh, uh, decipher and see on each image what they like will, will save you a lot of time mm -hmm. in the end. Um, so I feel like. what do you say to like, oh, I want to really pick your brain. Oh, I, I really want like, I really want the Emmanuel sauce on this image. What do you, what do you, what do you say to that? Well, I, I say that anything you get is going to be 
have <laughs> whatever my sauce is because I wouldn't be able to do anything otherwise. But um, I want to also know what inspires and excites you as a client, director, whatever. I want to know what excites you. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I always, I will always tell my clients like I, I will try to give you first something I think you want, but I will also give you my take on what I think mm -hmm. would fit in that scenario. So you're going to get at least two versions. Mm. Uh, and and I, I, I have never heard of a director or a client say, I don't like that. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had people say, do your style. Do, you, do what you do mm. is what I hear sometimes. Mm. Not a sometimes, lot, but yeah. sometimes. And they'll, they say, just do what you do. And I'll be like, okay. Uh, but I still need a little bit of a direction, right? right. Because, you know, I, I solve problems better if you give me some kind of problem to solve. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just me creating art and you really, I mean, you still have to explain to me, like, you want a spaceship or a car or a boat or a submarine? You got to tell me. <laughs> so by the, by the nature of you telling me, it already, you're already telling me what you like. Um, right. so I, I'm, that's what I usually would say. Uh, you know, I would just ask the questions I feel are needed and they have no problems just telling me that, you know? Right. Um, right. And it, yeah. So uh, what about you? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's best to get as much clarification, um, as possible. And I, I never think there are like, there are any like stupid questions you shouldn't dare to ask. I think if anything, um, with like, uh, like, uh, emails or, um, markups or Zoom meetings or whatever. It's it's never wrong to over communicate. Um, so that that that's just my rule of thumb. And and well, I mean, I, just just my take on yeah. that. Um, I I think it's great to communicate. Obviously, that's what mm -hmm. I'm at, uh, uh, advising. But I also think that you don't say what you can in one sentence, like in three. Like just be efficient and concise mm. in the way you ask things. Um, and also I just try not to try not to argue with the director, oh, yeah, that's a the good client. Point. That's a good uh, point. <laughs> the thing is, uh, well, you, you would be surprised. I've been in many of these meetings where, you know, even seasoned pros, uh, and sometimes especially seasoned pros because they, they've been around the block mm. and they think, well, okay, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. And it can come off quite abrasive and you don't ever get the point across really. And uh, it really makes it awkward the next time you guys work together, uh, like say say he's going to review your work, that, that it's already a little bit uh, uh, tense mm -hmm. and it's never a good, you know, it's never a good place to be, you know, to have your work looked at mm. in a tense atmosphere. Right. So I will always say, it's and they're your clients, so they want what they want. Yeah. Um, arguing with them just doesn't really mm. uh, work, mm. you know. Definitely, in, in my opinion, definitely I mean, not. it's never worked for me. The, the whole uh, like, yeah, really going against them and, and telling them like, oh, you, you shouldn't do it like that. And but so let's say there's a there's a there's a situation where, I mean, the thing is, right? We're like in a in a service industry. We provide a service to the client, um, and our our job is not to be the director, right? We work for the director. So there's a certain exactly. hierarchy established. But so it just happens so that you really disagree with the direction everything is going. Um, is, it, is it our point to say that, like, I, I'm not on board with this anymore. I don't like this. Like, I cannot continue this project. Or is it, is it upon us to suck it up because we do the work for hire? We provide a service. <coughs> um, what what should be our fundamental attitude towards towards the like this client? Uh, I mean, that's relationship? a good. That's a yeah. That's a great question. And and personally, for me, I I think I would try everything I can to uh, communicate why I think you know certain thing isn't working. Um, I'll try to get ver versions of things that right. I think work, but while addressing, you know, your version as well. Yeah. And if, if, if it gets to a point where I feel like artistically, this is just completely handcuffing me mm. and I don't believe in the project anymore, 
I will bow out. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And I will, I, and I, and I will tell the clients that I just don't think this is working out. Right. Um, and I'll be upfront or, you know, if you know, you know, sometimes, you know, certain people, no matter how you tell them the truth, mm. they can't hear it. Right. right. They, they're just not in that headspace of wanting to hear what you have to say. Then you just say, Oh mm. yeah, I think, uh, you know, this is, the end um you know I, i'll finish this much stuff and you know i have to move on yeah but that's the extreme um, case right yeah right that's the extreme case but i mean most people will understand and say hey you know i think our aesthetics aren't really working mm -hmm, out mm -hmm. i think you can be upfront with that yeah 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 um but you know i i would try everything i can mm, before point, i yeah. say that. i mean there's so many levels right i mean we are mainly visual communicators right so if you disagree with something um that your client asks of you right I think it's, it's it's just a prudent thing to do to go and visually solve the problem that you're having like according to what you think is better. And like you said, mm -hmm. like still fix the version that the, the director asks for, right? You still need to deliver that. But then as well, you can tell them like, so I've been thinking about this and I mean, it, it might it might happen so that you have to take your own time eat into your own time to show that just to get your point across to say like hey i worked up this version and for xyz reasons i think this might be a better t solution to our problem right so that's one way how you can how you can do that and another way would also be to i think trying to get to understand why the director makes has made a certain decision so that decision could be anything from like maybe he doesn't care about it enough. Maybe he's not like the most visual director. Maybe he, it's not, it just doesn't have a very high priority. He's more concerned with like the set they're building or the direct, the mm -hmm. actor throwing a fit or whatever. He just doesn't have the time um, or visual acuity to, to be bothered by it, right? It could be just that, or it could also be that there's budgetary reasons. Maybe it's too expensive to do it in VFX. Maybe it's too expensive to do it for real and, all sorts of other stuff that were like, okay, I'm because the director or whatever, he's, he's not your, he's not there to personally guide you every step of the way. He has 500 other people to attend to, um, to get his vision onto the paper. And yeah, maybe it's the number one priority for you right now, because for eight hours a day, you work on it, but for him, it's priority number 75. And he just, he just can't be bothered. And you have to adjust your, pro you have to adjust your, yeah, you have to adjust your outlook on the whole project because you're not, it's not about you. It's about, it's about the whole thing, right? So I think that's something to and, keep and, in and mind. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think that, you know, our jobs, you know, whether, I think a lot of people, do, you know, they think, well, you know, I, we're visual designers, you know, like you're saying, mm. I bet, you know, there's so much of your battle is fought in communication. Mm not even in you know like before anything gets done because you know you're there because obviously you know they've seen your portfolio mm. and they think you can do the work i mean you know you're not just somebody that they don't know but the truth of it is i mean if they looked at your portfolio they know that you know they trust that they think that you can do this right. work so but right now the, the bigger thing um, that most people don't get taught is how to actually talk to somebody and how to read your client and say okay that's what the client wants I'm going to try to give them what they want mm. while infusing some of my own right. um, uniqueness and creativity in it. And, and, and once you get some things approved, you build a trust. And when you build a trust, you're given a much more la a wider latitude mm. to do whatever you want. Right. And your, your uh, explanations and, and your directions usually will come at, at, at with much more trust. And they will say, okay, let me listen to what you have to say. Right. Um, and there's, so it's always one of those things where I think communication is super important. Mm. It doesn't mean you have to be social. Right. And you, it doesn't mean you have to be uh, super extroverted. It means that you have to talk with genuineness and sincerity when you need to. Mm. And that, that could really be like five sentences at the end of the conversation. It, it really could be that but it could be very poignant questions and very questions that you need answered. Uh, it could be like that. Right. Um, because, you know, I, 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 when I was on Matrix, you know, we had artists that were super extroverted, but we also had artists who couldn't even have lunch with the group mm -hmm. because they just were, they were just totally introverted and didn't want to talk to anybody. Right. 
it's okay. It's just that, just, just know that, you know, a lot of this commun is, is communication. And you might be the best painter, but if you don't get what the person who's hiring you wants you to do, then you're painting the wrong thing. Right. I mean, it's really that simple, yeah. isn't it? I mean, you know, ultimately, uh, in the end, that's all it goes down to. Um, what do you, what yeah. do you, what do you say? Like there, there's always that, that thing going around. Like, uh, it's like, um, like a saying that, oh, d don't, don't give the client what they ask for, but what they need. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm throughout this conversation and more and more I think about, is that, is that really something that, um, it, it, it can't be a blanket statement, but like you said, it has to be probably a combination of things. But, um, I'm I wonder how much of that is, is like, it, it's the right place to say that in the commercial art industry, right? I don't want to, I don't want to downplay it. I don't want to say like, there's nothing worth of value being made in this industry <laughs> far from that. But, um, <laughs> Um, I think it's 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 kind of like a, it, it's a it's a tricky marriage between artistic expression and and providing a service, and um, it can't be. Well, yeah. I mean, I think uh, yeah, I think ultimately it's always about if you're working for somebody, it's about providing a service mm. while trying to infuse your artistic expression. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really what we do, mm -hmm. right? I yeah. mean, if you get to the point where you're big enough and say you're a, like, I don't know, Ian McKay or, you know, like whoever is top in your mm. genre. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, you know, you're going to want to hire certain people because they do those things, but you still have to give them information right. for them to do their job. And ultimately, they're still working for you to give you your vision if you're the director exactly, or the client. Yeah. So I think ultimately, it's, you know, this is not your own art. And, and yeah. I think that's the one reason where, I mean, I, I, you know, a lot of people might disagree with yeah. me, but I never sign my art. That's an never. interesting point, yeah. I've never signed a, a commercial art. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. never signed a single piece of art. And, and, and I've been asked that even by PDs and they say, Hey, you never sign your stuff. I'm like, because it's not mine. Mm. I mean, it's not mine. That's it's a good not point. my yeah, art. Yeah. It's, I, I mean, I did that for you. Right. It's yours. Right. It's not mine. So I don't do that, but there are some other artists who religiously sign oh, everything yeah. because they had a hand in it. So I'm like, Hey, there's no right or wrong. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just, uh, I mean, it could even, it, it could even be just as much as it could be just like a, a sign or like a trigger that you kind of have left that piece behind or like it, it, it doesn't like, yeah, you, you divorce yourself from the idea that uh, this is like mine. This is like what I own or whatever, it, because yeah, it's, it's made for hire. It's not really the rights don't lie with you. It, it came out of your computer, but that that's about it. It's, it's, well, it's I had as, a hand. Yeah. In yeah it, it's yeah. as interchangeable as, as, as most of, uh, the concept art that is being produced. So, um, but again, I, I think it's like you said, it's it's a personal decision um, whether or not you want to do that. Sometimes you get asked I to mean, like so take it off, and yeah. sometimes you get asked to put it on. So it's really yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know, there's so many you know people who are responding. You know, like in one image, there's you know the art director, the pre D, the director. You know, everybody's in there. I mean, you can't credit everybody. Mm -hmm, exactly. So in the yeah. end, it's just like I credit nobody. <laughs> <all the> <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but, you know, like you know, I was reading here, you know, there's a lot of different clients out there. Right. Mm. Um, and, you know, obviously there's, you know, there's I mean, I, I'll just say that the reason why I bring that up is I think um, I like to have my notes sort of confirmed by email as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Like f that for me, because then, uh, you know, I. I'm, I make it clear what I'm going to do or, you know, like mm. what you asked me to do and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise it's all just kind of in the ether, you know, like just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, talked about in the meeting and nobody, you know, they, Oh, remember you said you liked red and they'd be like, what? I didn't. So um, that's something you would, you would send to the art director after the call just to say like, a lot of times I will just say, Oh, uh, you know, uh, yes, we're meeting, next Wednesday on this thing, um, just to clarify, these are the things I'm going to do. Oh, okay. Mm. And they'll, they'll say, I mean, I won't say every single detail, but I'll say, okay, you know, you wanted this, this, and this, and to pay attention to this. Mm. 
And I was like, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that has come back to sort of save me um, quite a few times. Um, I, I, no, yeah, to be honest, yeah, yeah, it no, has I can because uh, we've gotten to a point where they're like, well, why did you go down this direction? I'd be like, oh, well, you know, you told me to. And they'd be like, what? And then they'll, they'll say, I'll just quote the email back and then they'll just say, mm. oh, crap. Okay, sorry. I totally spaced out. You know, and, mm. and I'll be like, okay, you know, no problem. And, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving, right? Mm. But, I mean, I don't want people to feel like I don't listen to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, it's not even about blaming them. It's not about proving them wrong. It's about saying, hey, hey, I, I really did listen. Right. And I care about you as a client, a director, whatever. And I did listen. And, he, you know, here's the proof of that. And, and mm. I know, you know, it sounds kind of stressful. And why would, you know but it's it's happened to me before where it, people just kind of go well why did you do that and i'm like well you asked me to and <laughs> then <laughs> and then they say well no and you have nothing to back yourself up you know yeah then but now you can whip out the email and has say that ever happened to you i mean i think i think rarely it rarely has come back really as like uh something that mm -hmm. that that uh, was used to my disadvantage um but and it never got me to a degree where i thought like okay i should be confirming all the notes i had or all the well, all i what don't we do discussed. it like on everything I mean, not everything but like it, by and large so it, it hasn't gotten to that degree yet but i mean i can imagine it happening when um when i mean the the ad is too scatter shot scatter brained or whatever like has 500 artists to talk to then it's really hard to like um always have your thoughts arranged perfectly for every call because they jump on a call and they jump on the next call jump on the next call um so they can they can be things jumbled up um if you have if you have a good ad then they will usually say like oh my gosh i'm so sorry that uh, i gave you the wrong information um let's try again with with this right um so on both sides i think you need to mm. allow room for for mistakes yeah, yeah, yeah. being made right so i think i think though half the time mm. you know even sometimes they'll email me with all the notes it depends on how organized they are yeah yeah or if they like have visual maybe, effects yeah. places yeah. usually always email you with the notes yeah, all, yeah usually yeah. always yeah and sometimes they even oh. have like if it's like not only you in the call but maybe two other people then they have a pa uh, just taking the notes and sending it to everybody exactly um, yeah exactly like, like you exactly. said the more organized yes. vfx places usually do that um yeah that's true and so i, I also want to say something quick about the when you have your first meeting mm. uh and you felt like you've sort of read their mind and all this kind of stuff and you know you give the work and you're hoping for a good showing i'll tell you and and i just i wanted to throw this out there uh because you know I would say maybe seven out of 10 times, the first meeting doesn't go well. <laughs> and it doesn't go well, not because they're pissed at you or mm. anything. It's because you've thrown a lot of bullets out, a lot of mm. darts, and they haven't hit the director where they think it right. should be. That happens all the time. Mm. And you have to understand it's not personal. Mm. And a lot of directors work in a way of, show me and I'll tell you if it's wrong or right. Mm, mm, mm. And, you know, you're not going to show them in the first meeting and then all of a sudden it's right and you're done. Yeah. It's usually not going to be like that. But they'll usually be able to say, okay, you show me five things. I can tell you what I like about each yeah. and where I'm hoping this will go. Yeah. Um, but I, I could see how a lot of people would be like, oh, my God, you know, first meeting's coming up. I can't sleep. And it's going to be, you know, mm -hmm. and then, oh, my God, they don't like my work. It's horrible. I don't even know what they want. You know, like sometimes – when I, when I show, I mean, I've gotten to the point where I don't, I, it doesn't bother me, hmm. but uh, what I will do is say, okay. I mean, I've had directors where they're just super, like, they just say nothing hmm. and they look at it and go, no, no, no. And I'm like, okay, out of all these, y y if you, if you got nothing from him, then you, you'll have to corner him <laughs> a little bit and just hmm. say out of all these, which one do you like the best yeah. and why? Yeah. Do you like these things? And then you go off of what he says yeah. and say, oh, you like branches. Okay. Well, what about those branches? What about those? What about this composition? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. You don't like that. You like all of a sudden he's kind of building you again, what he likes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So take that and, and you go, well, if that wasn't pink, but boo, what do you think? Would that work? Because mm -mm. they might be reacting to the color, right? Yeah. 
uh, another big question is, is it, is it too sketchy for you? Mm. That's a big one because sometimes directors really hate sketches. Mm. They want to see something that looks quite cinematic and sort of almost final mm -hmm. looking, you know? So you have to kind of look at that and go, is that bothering you? Uh, and, 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 or vice versa, you know, something it's not sketchy enough. Like, why did you take so much time to give me a final image? This is a, supposed to be a sketch, mm -hmm. you know? They react to those things and it matters because, you know, whenever they see something, if obviously if they can't understand your drawing or your painting, then that yeah, you yeah. need to know that right from early, right? Yeah, I mean, and this is where yeah. you really need to to read his body language, the way he's talking, and you know, you just have to read that because if he looks at that and goes, "I don't even know what I'm looking at," right. then you then you know, okay, I need to. It needs to be more polished, and then you need to talk about time better, right? Mm. Uh, or if it's the idea or whatever. I mean, you know, do you you you, you must have been through a ton of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. It, it's there's so many so many different directors so many different things to look out for so many uh, i'm trying to think of of some examples um and um yeah what it usually comes down to like there's like sometimes directors don't want to be or like wh whoever i mean i'm saying director and as a placeholder for all your bosses that for you will all have. Um, clients, and and yeah. it's like mm -hmm. sometimes they don't want to be nailed down because if if they get nailed down, if they make a decision for a certain thing, then suddenly they are responsible in front of everybody else for having made that decision. And then they will maybe get grief from their superior, from a creative director, from a game, like from the mm -hmm, executive mm -hmm. producer and saying like, why did you choose this? Right. And then suddenly they get blamed for it. And sometimes uh, the responsibilities are getting pushed all over the place and in the end no decision is being made until it's way too late and then they're just going to go with something generic right so there's all kind of weird scenarios that you haven't really fully thought through that explain why you have to do, to do 50 iterations of the same ship um so it, 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 there's so many of these different scenarios so, so like, in terms of yeah. the first meeting yeah. though when you how often do you get things like oh yeah that looks great <laughs> we're done <laughs> It, it it it's it's rarely it never, happened. It barely it, ever it happens. It rarely me. happens, but sometimes, sometimes, and you don't even know why, right? It could be like sometimes you get like, oh, this is fantastic. This is exactly what we're looking for. But then maybe you're not the first person on the project. Maybe they have been doing this for a year and have been mm -hmm. trying to like appease the director and try find something. And for one year they have been shooting in the dark and it's all terrible. And then they get you on and suddenly because you have a fresh pair of eyes, you haven't seen anything that they have done previously, you knock it out of the park. And sometimes you knock it out of the park purely because of like producing something different. And then the director is so tired of having seen the same style from the same two guys for one year. And then suddenly he sees your stuff and it's fresh and... Um, whatever and then purely because it's different they're going to say like this is what i want and that can happen that happened and and this can happen as well and then they go into like and then it gets actually worse because then they say like like wow the f the, the thing you did in the first week was so amazing like and then you you can't hit the mark for the next two months that that is all that that is something that i've seen as well so that that doesn't doesn't help your self-esteem either but it's like you said, it's like, OK, this is great, but now I'm seeing too much of what yours is. And so it kind of gets boring. Now, please reinvent yourself again and give me something new. Right. So it's like it's really tricky to figure out what the client responded to, because you could easily mistake for mistake it for like, oh, they just they responded to me, my personality and my image because I did it this way. But when in reality they're only responding to i don't know a different color palette or a different shape language right and 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 you haven't you haven't done a good job of identifying exactly what it is yeah that that's a good point and and i think you know ultimately in the end it's about reading your director mm. you know your client and, and and about seeing you know what is it that you're doing that's right and how can you continue doing those things mm. uh, but hopefully with some clues and some ways to bring out those clues mm. from whoever you're working with. 
you know, because I think ultimately there's no hard and fast rule. No, no, no. It's just, you know, here are some things that we see we've been through. Uh, I don't know. I mean, is there anything <laughs> else you've, you, you want to no, touch on? No, I think on? We, 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 we touched on, on pretty much everything. And I think we had some really good examples of... Um, I mean, the thing is, right, what we have to understand is that we as artists are all different and the, our bosses are all different. They're also only human. They answer to different people. Um, and it's, it's a big web of interdependencies. And, and we, cannot, we cannot try to understand the full breadth of every project that we're on. Um, but we have to realize that we, we are not producing art for our own sake. We're not the relationship yeah. between the client and us is not a private insular thing right it's it's we're we're within a bigger production and often like a thousand people involved or more and and um we have to do our best to understand um what drives the persons involved and and how we can get along with everybody um in a, in a productive way to get the work done that we we are being paid to do and um, I mean, if if our personal creative expression has to sometimes take a step back, then that's what it is, right? Um, but yeah. I think um, no, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I I think that you know, uh, in closing, for me, mm -hmm. I, I would say that um, just remember, communication is sort of. I, I would think that communication is key, mm -hmm. uh, and to do the best you can to uh, be aware of your communication mm -hmm. and to be aware of how um, you're trying to get information, how you're using that information um, to further your success as much as possible mm -hmm. with this client. Uh, do your best, and in the end, don't take things personally uh, if something is not approved when you want it to be approved. Mm. Uh, of course, we all want things to be approved. You get a high from it. You yeah, always, yeah, I yeah. know I do, but, uh, there's a, but now I don't get a low from not being approved. If it's not approved, I would just be like, oh, okay, just one more thing that I found that doesn't work. Mm. Great. Exactly. Next. Yeah. Um, and, you know, but ultimately, I still want to use all my tools of communication and observing and all those kind of things to make sure I have the best su chance of success mm. at my next painting mm. like i start a new next new thing next week and i'm gonna have to go through this all over again yeah yeah it's for the, always. i don't know x amount of time mm -hmm. and and i've but i'm confident because i've been through a lot mm -hmm. of this and i've been through a lot of highs and lows and i think this would help hopefully it, it will help somebody to understand that a little better yeah um, i think so i think so um yeah. but We'll see. Well, you can let us know in your in the in the comments as usual if this was helpful. If you have your own stories of uh, what went wrong with clients, or maybe you 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 have a new job starting soon, and you have some burning questions on how to deal with uh, with the next new boss. Um, so do let us know. We'll we'll try to answer all of our uh, comments as usual, or hit us up on Facebook, Instagram. Where are yeah, and let us know about are, you yeah. like our big faces. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, do you do you like our <laughs> our big noses here um, no <laughs> artwork because we're getting so much grief from <laughs> exactly <that. laughs> exactly cool okay so if you enjoyed this like comment and subscribe and uh, see you guys in the next one bye bye